We'll stay here for a few breaths. And then belly breathe. Enter your belly on the floor and feel that massaging. So stay down and just belly breathe. Belly breathing into the floor and feel that massaging the internal organs. You might even feel the pulse in the belly. Couple breaths here. And then we're going to come into a cobra. So from the chest, just take the hands so the thumbs are kind of in line with the shoulders. Resting on the forehead. I'm going to inhale in position. So I'm lifting my head so I can speak to you. Your forehead's going to be down. Inhale in position. And as you exhale, pull the belly button right up in towards the spine. Feel that engaging the core. And on your next inhale, you're going to lift up from the spine, the shoulders, and the head. So you're not using the hands, you're using the muscles in the back. Exhale, come back down again and pull the belly button in towards the spine. See if you can do five up and down. And see if you can lift up from the base of the spine first. So rather than thinking about lifting the head, then the shoulders, then the chest, See if you can lift right down at the back of the waist, as low as you can, coming up and then rippling up from there. So see if you can do five, moving up and down. So Trish, you're lifting up and you're lifting the head, you're lifting the chest. So it's going to look like this, lifting up, look up. Chest up, shoulders up, and then come back down. Scoop the belly button in towards the spine to engage the abdominals, and then just lift the upper body up. Is that clear? That's better. Try not to push into the hands too much. Just draw the shoulder blades back towards each other, and you can use the hands. To sort of pull back to lengthen the spine, but no lifting with the hands. It's all coming from the upper back. So we've done five. Then see if you want to hold it for five breaths. Just hold the position, but not your breath. Five breaths. If you want to keep moving or you just want to rest, that's fine. When you're done, just slowly peel the body back down towards the mat, resting on the other side of the face with the hands down, resting on the backs of the hands. We took a few breaths here, checking in with that pulse again if you can feel it, your digestive fire, and just belly breathing. Now we're going to do um, locusts, so we're just going to lift the legs. So staying down, staying where you are, hands by the shoulders, same position. This time we're going to inhale in position and on the exhale, you're going to point your toes and stretch your legs away from you. So you're lengthening the legs and as you do that, you might just feel a natural lift in the legs. So just emphasize that lift, lifting up a little bit more. And come down on the inhale. Exhale, lengthen and lift the legs. And you might feel your head lifting up off the floor. 
off the mat, that's fine. You can allow that to happen. So we're not trying to lift the head. Okay, so we'll just do five here. You lengthening the legs, both legs together if you can. And just feel a lift. So even if it's hardly lifting at all, you're still using these muscles in the lower back. And when you've done five here dynamically, moving with the breath, you can hold the position maybe for five breaths. As long as your lower back isn't complaining, that's fine. When you've done your five, just come down again. Turn the head the opposite way, resting the arms down. Take your break. Good. And just tuning in again to <clears throat> to that pulse in the and then around the navel. Belly breathing, just to massage the internal organs. Obviously, this will be good for your digestion, just to just to balance out the digestive fire. that breath coming back to a nice calm equilibrium okay and we're going to put these two together if it's too much, then you can just alternate between upper body and lower body, okay? So you've got a couple of options here. So what we're going to do again with the breathing, so when we exhale, we pull the navel in towards the spine and then we're going to inhale, lifting the upper body. Then keeping the upper body lifted, we're going to exhale and lift the legs. So you can either stay here, emphasising the lift in the upper body on the inhale, and the lift in the lower body on the exhale, or you can lift and then you can come down on the floor for a full round of breath. So that would mean you'd be inhale, lift the upper body, exhale, lift the legs, and then inhale and exhale coming down before you start your lift again. So it's up to you, the dynamic one, moving with the breath is a little bit more gentle, um, and the holding in the static position, so you're lifted up the whole time, is much more intense. So both quite strong exercises. Just see what your body's saying to you. Make sure if you're moving up and down, it's a nice fluid movement. There's a journey from the floor to the lift, nice and slow, reflecting the breath, yeah, that's nice. Not thinking about how high you're going to get, just follow that journey, slowly and fluid. And then just come down and rest on your chest, on your belly, belly breathing. You might feel that, that, that pulse really quite strong now. We've been stopping our digestive fire. Just resting on the side of the face with the arms down by the side. 
resting on the top, the backs of the hands. Allowing the breathing just to come back to a nice calm equilibrium. Relaxing the belly, the pelvis, pelvic floor, so that when you're breathing, you're breathing right into the belly, just really making the best of that massage of the internal organs into the floor. Gonna get up nice and slowly. So take the hands beside the shoulders, lift the head, push down into the arms, curl onto the toes, come up slowly. Take a big stretch first in the spine, and then curl onto the toes. Take a breath here, and then put the heels down. Hand forward. Take a breath. Relax the neck, the jaw, everything. Roll the shoulders, release the spine. Any movements that you feel you need, and then we'll just come up halfway, take a breath. And then slowly come up all the way, slowly, slowly, rolling up. Shoulders, head comes up last, and then shake out. Send it into Dasana, spread the toes wide, check in with the posture and the alignment. So first of all, just check the weight distribution in the feet. Say, I say this a lot, but if you lean back, the front of the body is going to tense up to stop you from falling backwards. And if you lean forward, you might feel it more in the upper part of the, the back body. So we want to get that equilibrium, so we've just got that weight all perfectly balanced on all points of the feet. Try not to lock out the knees, just keep a little micro bend, slide the tailbone down towards the mat and engage the abdominals. Roll the shoulders, hands down towards the floor, just roll the shoulders down, pulling the shoulders away from the ears and then pull the back of the head back to make sure that the ears are lined above the shoulders. And we'll just take a few breaths here, tuning in, connecting to the physical body. Just noticing any sensations in the part of the body that is speaking to you. Feel the spine lengthen and straighten and soften as you inhale, up out through the crown of the head. And the shoulders just rolling gently back and down as you exhale. <clears throat> Pushing down into the feet. Switching on the legs, feeling the energy moving up. Inhale, lengthen out through the crown of the head. Exhale, roll the shoulders back and down and just open the eyes if you've got them closed and start shaking out, moving around. Let me just change something like this. I'm just, I've got this recording here and I'm just trying to get the the angle right. Maybe it works. Uh, right, so we're going to do a dynamic Utkatasana. So what we want to have is the, the knees bent. And then from here, what the temptation is to kind of stick the bum out and overextend the lumbar curve so that we can get down deeper. But we don't need to get down deep. 
it's fine we just want a neutral spine so the core is switched on so from here just see if you can slide the tailbone down towards the base of the spine and then if you take your arms up so you're drawing your shoulders back towards each other you might feel something just switching on so shoulders back like this feel something switching on in the core and then keeping that neutral spine we're going to inhale take the arms up and then exhale down to a prayer position so everything from the feet to the navel is fixed and then it's an inhale back draw the shoulders back shona see what i'm doing here it's like um i don't know if it's jazz hands and then up so you don't need to take the hands right up towards each other they can be out to the side if you're minding your shoulders inhale and then exhale so the inhale draw the shoulders back first and then feel that neutralize the spine in the lumbar curve and then up and uh, so you should be feeling the burn in the thighs inhale sweeping the arms up exhale prayer position if you're feeling the burn in the thighs and it's too much, you can look out your legs and hang forward. Take a break if you need to. Make sure your knees aren't falling in towards each other. And keep the thighs working strong. So we're going to go in and do this in a twisting. If you feel like, you know, you're kind of starting to feel the burn in the thighs, you might want to just lock it, the legs, straighten them out, have a wee shake, or if you want to keep working, keep working, yeah? And then we're going to start, inhale up. And then we take a prayer position and twist round to the side. You might get your elbow on the opposite knee, twisting round. Keep the knees parallel. And then inhale back up. And exhale to the other side. Inhale up. Exhale side. Keep moving in time with your natural breath, keeping a neutral spine. One more on each side. And then lock out the knees, take the feet about shoulder width and hang forward. Hang forward here. I'll be back in one second. So guys, just getting my plug. Forgot to plug it in. That was clever. So stay here and breathe. And then start just gently moving around. Phew. That's it. Slowly get yourself back up. I'm going to come into a balance pose. Just <clears throat> so we started a wee bit late. We might, might run over past 10. Is that okay for everybody? Nobody's got a pressing engagement at 10 or 1 or anything. 
Okay. Right, so we're going to do the Natala Jasala. This is the Lord of the Dancers or King of the Dancers. Um, so it's a balance pose, so I don't want too much paradigm underneath my feet. Um, so you can do this either just standing free or against the wall. So I'm going to demonstrate first of all, and then I'll show you how you can use the wall. The first thing you want to do is get the hand inside, if you can, inside the foot so that the thumb is on the pad off the little toe so that encourages you to keep the knee in rather than out to the side so if you take it here you're kind of pulling your leg out to the side so you're trying to get the knees together thighs parallel try not to lock out um lock out that standing leg and then from here if you're just doing it freestanding you can start taking the arm up if you still feel stable you can start to scissor so from the side it's a kind of scissoring. When you get down halfway, you push the foot into the, away from you, so you're trying to straighten out your leg and feel that kind of springing up. And then with that, you lift up in the chest, okay? So if you want to do this against the wall, stand close to the wall, maybe about eight inches. Then you can take one hand up and you can just come into your back bend, lifting up. And then from here, you can play about with taking your hand off the wall just for a couple of breaths at a time. So you've got options. Okay, take whichever option is right for you. Make sure you feel stable. So it's like going up a ladder. Make sure you feel stable on the first rung before you move up to the second rung. Trish, you look like you're very far away from the wall. So if you stand facing the wall and about eight inches, maybe a little bit more, then you can take one hand up and really stretch up through the front of the chest. And you've got that stability from the wall. Good. Shona, can you try and push the top of your foot away Almost like you're straightening, from here you're straightening the leg out and there's a kind of springing action. You might not be able to, and it's fine if you can't, but it's just something to try. So you'll feel that thigh switching on and you'll feel the leg springing up the way. And take a few more breaths here if you want. If you've had enough on that side, you can stop and shake out. Okay, so just slowly come back down, massage the feet into the mat, shake out legs, whatever you need to do, releasing the spine, anything at all. And then when you're ready, come onto your other side. So again, just facing the wall if you want to, or freestanding. Try not to lock out the standing leg. Moving like a scissor, opening up when you get halfway, then push into the top of the foot. Lifting up through the spine, through the chest. Stay here for a few breaths. Good. Just lifting up through the chest. And if you want to come down, come down. If you want to stay a few more breaths, that's fine. Just tune into your body. Everything's optional except breathing. And then slowly just come back down. Shake out anything you need to do. Shaking the legs, releasing the spine, moving around in any way. 
that you feel or your body feels it needs to. And just take a breath and then come down slowly. Come down, we're going to do pigeon pose. This is good for the liver channel. Time we on. Oh, we'll do this. Yeah, have we, have we all got time for another 10 minutes? You okay for another 10 minutes? Yeah, no dust to be anywhere. Okay, good. So if you come onto all fours, take your right knee up behind your uh, wrist and then swivel your leg in. So I don't know if you can see. I'm kind of taking my knee up and then I'm swiveling my leg. Kind of swiveling my leg in like that, yeah? I don't know if that helped. <laughs> and then swivel and then just come back on that left leg. Keep the legs straight down behind you and then you can check in with your sacrum to make sure that you're not kind of twisting over one side or the other. Just get your sacrum nice and level. Then you can come down onto your elbows, onto your fists, onto the hands or all the way down onto the mat and just stay here. A few breaths. As you inhale, just feel the lightness, the softness and the ease moving into the body, pushing all the way down into the pelvic floor, the belly blowing up like a balloon, releasing any tension in the pelvic floor and around the hip joints. And also pushing back into the sacrum. Breath, just expanding that whole pelvic basin and the abdominal cavity. And then exhale, sink down. Just let gravity take you all the way down into the stretch, right up to the edge, the edge of the comfort zone. Gently start to move out of this now. We're going to swap sides. So just take the hands down in front of the knees and lift up. Push up into a slight back bend. Just come down. Swing your legs forward. Give them a bit of a shake. So in between sides, we maybe want to release and just feel that neutral neutral alignment in the hips and give them all a bit of a shake do whatever you need to do and then come over and swap sides lift knee up to the wrist swiveling the foot over and then just taking that right leg behind you and sink down good <clears throat> Just stay here. You all right, Shona? So, you, if, can you, if you've got any um, limitations and this is painful, you can do it lying on your back because I'm noticing that you're kind of leaning over onto the side rather than coming over onto the front. So if there's something that's really not working in this position, this is just for Shona, and you can come down onto your back and instead of taking the knee to the wrist, you just take it up and out and just gently open in that hip. Good. So Shona, bring your knee, bend your knee a little bit more if you wish and just intensify. So that was just an instruction for Shona. But if anybody else is feeling it too, um, you know, that's fine. Just opening it out through that leg. 
inside. So we're not ever forcing anything. You must look after your body. And if you just go to your own edge and relax there, the body's going to feel nurtured and safe. And it is going to open up. It might take time. If you've had any kind of injury or trauma, it will take time. But we must just go easy, relaxing at the edge. We're not going to crash right through a barrier and cause a multitude of damage. We're just going to relax at the edge and breathe. And we're going to start coming out of this slowly, lifting the head, bring the hands down in front of the knees. So you guys that are on your back, just come over and into a seated dandasana. Pull the flesh away. Just give your legs a little shake. Move around. Do your windscreen wipers or bend and straighten the legs or whatever you feel you need to do. Now we'll just come over onto our backs and just take one hand on each knee and just side to side, gently circling round, over to the side, over to the other side. Just moving around, massaging the lower back. And you can start to come into a bit more of a twist. So as you take your knees over to the right, you can let go of your left hand and just let the right hand support the knees, then swap over. Get a nice twist in the spine. And then come onto your back, straighten your legs up, push the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. And then just take whatever last movements you feel you want to take, whatever your body needs, any last uh, stretches or movements. If you want to get some layers on, get some layers on, socks, jumpers, blankets, a pillow under your head and come into your relaxation. So you can either have the feet to the edge of the mat rolling open, the arms down by the sides about the same angle, or you can bend the knees up, take the feet to the edge of the mat and drop the knees towards each other. Make sure you don't feel any tension in the hips. If you're familiar, Mags, you can do your up against the wall thing if you want.